This video is a brief feature overview of the Aux Tools Biome Scatter Toolset. Scattering assets in Houdini Hive Fields is relatively simple. However, for more natural looking scatter strategies, especially those involving assets that include many variants, which is highly desirable, these scenarios can quickly become complex and require a lot of repetitive node setup and management. These tools consolidate this complexity and node management into a simplified workflow using an HDA as a sort of rerunnable scatter controller. I'll go into depth into how this works in my next video, which I'll link in the description. Here's an example of one imported asset, daffodils, which contains many variants. Here are the 27 geometry asset nodes for this import. It's easy to see how importing every one of these into our type field would be cumbersome and time consuming. Using the biome scatter tool set, I can easily group together these variants into a scatter set and scatter them onto the hype field mask in a few simple steps. This is just one asset example. Having variants for trees, rocks, shrubbery, or anything else you would want to have scattered on terrain can quickly become staggering. Another cumbersome scenario to handle is hierarchical scatter masking. We don't want our assets like trees or grass growing through rocks. Here is a quick example of mask created after the rock assets have already been scattered. And here are the scattered grass proxies that have avoided the scattered rock mask. We can also see the scattered tree surface area that the grass and rock scattering were masked to avoid. In exploring the high field scatter node, I was unable to figure out how to implement scale and density falloff based on mask values particularly for how the scattering behaves at the edge of the mask or if you want to add variation with a mask nose node. Maybe there's a parameter or setting I wasn't able to understand, so please leave a comment if you know how to do this using what is already there. In any case, I've added a VEX snippet to the HDA controller with a default setup to handle the scale and density falloff. This VEX snippet maps to an added VEX node inside of the height field scatter node. The first image is just normal scattering without any falloff. Now using what I am calling pluck in the tool as density falloff, we can see that as the mask values decrease at the edges, there is a lower density in the scattering. This next image is similar to pluck, but affects the p-scale correlating to the lower mask values. This last example includes both pluck and p-scale falloff. And while we are seeing this for grass, go out into nature and notice that these two important features apply to most natural biological scattering boundaries. These examples of pluck and pisca fall off are extreme, but I've included sliders to adjust these as much as you'd like. A crucial element of the biome scatter HDA is the staging area called the scatter bridge. The scatter bridge merges in all the asset variants organized by scatter sets which can further be organized into scatter groups ready to be applied to a terrain mask for scattering. In this bridge, you can assign a weight to a scatter set within its scatter group. You can also modify the transform for a scatter set or entire group. Notice the flower group in the middle. There are two scatter sets in this flower group, yellow and white daffodils and red and pink poppies. Here is how this looks scattered on the flower mask I have set up on my terrain. And in this image, I have given the daffodils a weight of 20 and kept the poppies to the default value of 1. So for the total scatter points in the high field scatter, the ratio of daffodil variance to the poppy variance is 20 to 1. In this next screenshot, I've simply modified the transform for the poppy scatter set and the scatter bridge. Individual variants also have a transform so you can modify them as shown in this next image. I set one of the variants to be three times larger than the rest. Another challenge in working with height field scattering is hitting viewport polygon limit and issues with the viewport becoming very slow to respond. I have implemented a useful proxy mechanic that can better help you see what is being scattered as well as maintaining a responsive viewport. These proxies default to colored boxes mapped per scatter set, but a custom proxy may be given as well. I've made it easy to toggle proxies for individual scatter groups as well as all at once. This is only setting the display flag, which affects what we see in the viewport, so the render flag will still be set to render the scattered geometry. Okay, this, is, this last section is going to be a very brief overview of the workflow of this tool in Houdini. Okay, so here I already have my height filled with all the masks that I wanted, and I already have all the assets 
configured the way that the tool needs to consume them. I have my Biome controller. This is the HDA for the tool. This, this is basically what you'll start with in the process. Okay, once you have your, your scatter sources, the tool will use these sources to create these scatter sets. The scatter sets then go into the scatter bridge, as shown earlier. And from there, we can create all the scatter nodes in the high field node, as seen here. So each of these are those scatter groups and, and to map to a scatter mask. Um, these, this will also generate these render controller nodes for further control of the rendering and proxies. Um, and that, that's pretty much the workflow and each step each step in this workflow is rerunnable and also has options for maintaining uh, the, the settings that are already there. And then also has options for loading presets for the height, the height field nodes in particular, which are really handy. Uh, all right, so the, what that looks like in the HDA is we have, uh, we have some configuration in our main controller tab. The create scatter set tab has our sources and creates these scatter sets that are ready to be brought into the scatter bridge. You can then create the scatter bridge. Once that's created, uh, this list will populate and each of the scatter groups can be assigned a scatter mask. These masks are brought in from the high field node. Next, we go to the biome scatter tab. This is, this is where we run the tool that uh, that creates all the height field nodes. This will also generate these new tabs, which are VEX, which are VEX snippets that are mapped inside of each height field node. Um, next, we have our proxy and LOD tab. So like I said, like I showed before, this can trigger the proxies. If there are LODs set up in your source assets, uh, they can be controlled here. Um, lastly, I have a utils tab, but just a couple of redshift util handy utils here. Um, and again, all this I will go over in depth in the tutorial video for this tool set.